Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Epic Gangsta Tales. I got a little uh, surprise episode for you guys today. A little bit of uh, Monday Madness, right? Switch it up a little bit. We're uh, we're gonna stick with the patriarchal crime family, but we're gonna shoot out to Providence for this one. Providence faction. We got a, a great episode today. Today's episode is on none other than Anthony Ponytail Perillo, currently 72 years old, from Providence and Cranston, Rhode Island. And it, it's a crazy story. What an interesting guy this guy is. In 1986, a judge sentenced Perillo to 30 years in prison, with 20 years to serve and the remaining suspended with probation, after he pleaded guilty to two counts of second-degree murder. That would mean, at a minimum, he would be on probation until 2016. Perillo was released from state prison on parole in 1993 for the double murder conviction. And in 2009, he was advised that he was off state parole. And then he would start his 10-year suspended sentence with probation. In 1982, Perillo was sentenced to two consecutive life terms in prison for the murders of Ronald R. Leone, 28 years old, of Johnston, Rhode Island, and Rudy Baronet, 17, of Cranston, Rhode Island, whose bodies were never found. It was, it was only the second time in Rhode Island history that a jury had convicted someone of murder in a case where the bodies were not found, which is crazy. That's, that's, a, that's a big deal, you know what I mean? Uh, only the second time they ever did that, you know, back in, you know, and this wasn't, this isn't new. This is all old stuff, but I mean, look at the DeMeo crew or the Westies or whatever, right? The old mantra, you know, no body, no case. You know, like, he was probably like, what the, you know, what the hell, you know, um, after the state Supreme Court reversed the convictions, Perillo pleaded guilty on the eve of his second trial in 1986 to two counts of second degree murder. So, I mean, a whole, a whole different ball game. Still not great. Yeah, I mean, yeah, doing, you know two counts of second degree murder, but at the same time, at least you get numbers rather than two consecutive life sentences. You know what I mean? Like, it's a whole different ball game. We're gonna go ahead and get into the incident right now. This is the actual incident of the double murder. At or about October 2nd, 1977, someone who we're gonna call, we're just gonna call Miss Man Freddy, who was an on and off again girlfriend of Perillo was with Perillo when he her handed her a briefcase and two sleeping bags and asked her to stow these away, uh, you know, put them somewhere, you know, safe, and, and I'm gonna call you at a certain point to ask them back. And it seemed innocent enough, you know, a briefcase and, and two sleeping bags, like, you know, what the fuck? Who knows what the fuck that could be? It could be, it could be anything, you know what I mean? Um, innocent enough. Um, Miss Man Freddy obliged and didn't ask questions. Anthony Perillo was also hanging with close friend and roommate Dennis Roach. Um, Miss Man Freddy left the residence on Mount Pleasant Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island. She eventually peeked into Cookie Jar. Right? I mean, who would, you know, the briefcase. Who, who wouldn't? I mean, I, I'd be like, all right, what's going on? If I'm going to hang on to it, let me a little peep real quick. And, um,. Inside the briefcase, she observed a silver handgun and a pair of gloves. She nervously shut the case and tried to keep her cool. The next day, she was summoned back to the residence in Providence, um, 69 Mount Pleasant Avenue. As she arrived with the two sleeping bags and the, and the briefcase, right? Like a, like, like a uh, you know, it's pretty solid right there. She shows up. Most people would have been horrified, you know what I mean? But whatever. And uh, as she came through the apartment to see Perillo and Dennis Roach, she stumbled upon what she realized was two bodies laid out in the kitchen, blood everywhere. And dead on the floor, she recognized Ronald Leone, 
and she did not recognize a young teenage male, which would be, in fact, be the 17-year-old Rudy Baronet. Uh, Ronald Leone, she she had recognized and said she had met on a, a number of occasions, five or six times, I believe the court transcript said. Um, she watched in horror as Perillo and Roach each stuffed a bloody body into two separate sleeping bags. Perillo stated to Miss Manfredi, I hope you got a strong stomach. And uh, <laughs> followed by a reassurance that this had to be done. There was no other way. And uh, he, then, he then told her to worry about it. And uh, he, he then asked her to clean up the kitchen that was covered in blood. And uh, while him and Roach disposed of the two bodies. Reluctantly, she agreed and spent the next hour and a half to two hours scrubbing everything down with bleach and water. Um, you know, just a crazy scene. Imagine walking in on that and, you know, it's it's bad enough finding the shit in the suitcase and I need to walk in and like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> it's all right, it's okay. <laughs> and uh, so upon his return from disposing of the bodies, she asked, what happened? And he told her, it's fine, don't worry about it. And you, you know, they're gone and, and you should just forget about it. On or about December 4th, 1981, Dennis Roach of Cranston, Rhode Island, Perillo's roommate and close friend was killed under very suspicious circumstances. You know what I mean? Like, go figure, like, he, you know, he helps knock somebody off with you and then dispose of the bodies, which were never found, and, and somebody kills him, right? I mean, who knows? I, I'm not gonna... I, it could... It, the, mo- the motherfucker could have walked out of his house and got hit by lightning, as far as I know. I don't know. But the guy the guy showed up dead. That's all we know. Uh, you know, this... So, after Roach was killed... Uh, excluding Perillo, who was a, a culprit, you know, um, and that left Miss Manfredi as, as the, the lone survivor of, of that whole incident, you know, with the, uh, the events on, on Pleasant Avenue, you know, on or about October 3rd, 1977. It was Roach, Perillo, and Miss Manfredi, right? Roach got knocked off, just Perillo, Miss Manfredi. So, you know, when, when she found out, he got killed. She was horrified. She, she goes running to the Providence police, you know, to spill her guts about Perillo. He was then arrested um, for the double murder. You know, go figure. Crazy story. Crazy, crazy story. And like I said, this is all old stuff. He, you know, did time. This is, you know, nothing new. It is said that Perillo held a consigliere role from 2009 to 2015. Um, now, like I said, this, you know, we don't, we don't cover anybody active on this channel. Um, you know, uh, Perillo is retired, um, but he held a consigliere role from 2009 to 2015. Rumored. This is all rumored. You know what I mean? I'm not going to act like this is all fact. I'm just giving you the story. Um, I figured this was a really interesting guy. You know, uh, I, I, you know, we don't get out there. We, we haven't gone out to Providence yet. We've covered the Boston faction and stuff like that, right? You know, you know, it's the area I'm from and stuff like that. You know, right outside, right outside of Boston. Um, so I figured we'd start off, you know, shoot, shoot out to Providence like I said we would. And I couldn't think of anybody better than this guy. This guy had an interesting story, man. You know, uh, crazy, crazy story. Uh, anyways... In August 2016, Perillo was sentenced to five years in prison for a vicious beating he threw some guy at his establishment, um, which is the now defunct Club 295 in Providence on Federal Hill, which, if you don't know, is the, you know, that's essentially the Little Italy, Providence, Rhode Island's Little Italy, right? Like, Boston is the North End, the Little Italy section, like, you know, the old man, Raymond Patriarch, used to have his coin matic right on Atwell's Avenue, right there, Federal Hill. Um, I haven't been out there in a long time, but, you know, uh, that's where this, this was at, Club 295. 
Um, unfortunately, Perillo was still on probation. I think he was probably like real close to, to getting off, right? Because he had the, the suspended sentence that was to probation, right? Um, and he, I think he just missed that threshold, so he was still on probation when this incident happened. Um, he was, yeah, he was still on probation for the double murder until 2015, ultimately violating his probation on the double murder. Um, Carrillo, 69, at the, uh, at the time of the incident, um, he and his team of security mistakenly thought they saw and found the man who had stabbed a bouncer at Club 295 the weekend prior. There was an incident, I guess, where there was a fight, a rowdy place. Like, if you've been, you know, I, I used to love going to the clubs down in Providence, right? It's nuts down there. Like, I, I used to, I, I, I still say it's better than, than Boston. I was just nuts, you know? You know, being younger and stuff, you go drinking, chasing girls everywhere, there's colleges, everything is so crammed together like that. When those clubs empty and, and oh man, you know, getting to your car was like, a, you know, you, you, you deserved a beer just for that. You know what I mean? You made it to your car without having to crack somebody or getting cracked. You know, you're, you're doing all right. Providence is a rowdy, rowdy place. Um, so, you know, so a bouncer got stabbed the weekend prior. They think they see the guy, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not the guy. Uh, it, it, it happened to be, it turns out it was a couple. And the, the guy, they, the guy was with his wife. The wife was a doctor. Uh, and the husband, who they thought was the culprit of the stabbing the weekend prior, turns out he wasn't was brutally beat, um, broken nose, uh, vision loss, uh, I don't, I don't know if Perillo even put his hands on him, you know what I mean, like, who knows, I, the way they, it says in the article, it makes it seem like it was mostly the security team, but like I said, I wasn't there, I don't know, but yeah, a guy got freaking tuned up, um, you know, as his wife watched in horror as her husband was beaten mistakenly until he was unconscious. This little stunt bought Perillo a five-year stint at the ACI Correctional Facility in Cranston, Rhode Island. This is this is the uh, Rhode Island Providence's, you know, they're, they're, I, I believe it's their jail and prison. I could be mistaken, I'm not from out there, um, but the, but ACI is their, their jail out there. Um, so yeah, you got a five-year sentence on that. Um, so, part of the perks of being a protege of ex-boss um, Luigi Baby Shacks Minocchio, he was he was a protege of uh, Luigi Baby Shacks Minocchio, and you know the perks of 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 having him as a mentor, um, and you know let me just say this first before we get into it, you know. I think, I think Minocchio is probably one of the better bosses the Patriarch of Crime family has, has, has had, maybe, you know, especially from the 90s on, where, like, you know what I mean, like, uh, he took over after Cadillac Frank and stuff like that, and that was a, a, a crazy, turbulent five years, right, and he, he comes on, I think, like, 95, 96, something like that, uh, you know, and, you know, in fact, you know, Myself and a few others believe that the stability of Minocchio and his administration back then, when he was boss for just shy of 11 years, I believe, is a huge reason that the Patriarch of Crime family is alive and well today in 2023, when so many other cities, Cosa Nostra crime families, have dissolved into the abyss, right? I mean, there's plenty, plenty of cities that used to have a, a, a mafia presence that don't. I mean, New York is New York. The five families, they're not going nowhere. You know, it might be watered down and stuff like that, but they're still around. You know, you got Boston and Providence, the New England Mafia. You got Jersey, Philly, uh, Buffalo, right? Uh, New York, Chicago. Um, you know, there's, there's probably some more that I'm, I'm, I'm missing. Of course, Canada and stuff like that, which is like the wild, wild west these days. But anyways, you know, um, you know, part of the perks of, of being the protege of, of Baby Shacks was after he was paroled from state prison on the double murder beef in 93, Perillo got hooked up with a pretty good gig. He was made head of security 
and uh, was also working as a teamster on the set of the movie Outside of Providence, uh, starring Alec Baldwin. Um, undercover surveillance video, I'm not sure if it was like the Undercover News, News Team 5, or, or if it was the FBI or whatever, but it said, you know, um, as they, they had him under surveillance, and um, they observed him, um, what was it, yeah, um, oh, they observed Perillo acting as a bodyguard and driver to film star Alec Baldwin, courtesy of Luigi Baby Shacks Minocchio, I mean, that's pretty... That's that's pretty clutch, right? Guy comes out of uh, out of jail, you know. Uh, like I say, you know, he was sentenced to thirty, had to do at least twenty. He got out ninety three, you know, early eighties to till ninety three. Did a did a good chunk a chunk of time in prison. Got off kind of easy if, if you think about it. Even though it's kind of you know whatever. We're not gonna get into that. Um. Anyways. Um. All in all, it's a crazy story. Perillo uh, rose as high as consigliere and was rumored to have held an acting boss position for a very short time. Again, unverified. That could be complete BS. I don't know. And like I said, he's long retired. Like, he, he's, uh, you know, today, Anthony Perillo is a free man and he is retired from the mafia in a life of crime. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure back in 2015, that was like the last hurrah. He was getting up there in age, a completely just a, a situation that probably just got, like I said, it's rowdy there, man. Like Providence on the weekends, leaving a club, a bar, it's rowdy, man, you know? I used to love it when I was younger. Um, but yeah, like I said, an interesting guy, an interesting story. We had to take it out to Providence, right? Keep it with the Patriarch, the crime family. And guys, we're going to do content on other stuff in the mob genre. I'm going to do stuff on New York. I'm going to hit Philly. I'm going to probably do some Jersey stuff. Um, and of course, I'm going to do more on, on the Patriarch, the crime family. Both factions, Boston, Providence. Um, so the first of many. Um, this has been another episode of Epic Gangster Tales. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Enjoy your week. Let me know when it's fucking Friday. Uh, you know, but at least the Patriots, the fucking stiff ass Patriots, the bum ass Patriots finally pulled off a win against the Bills. I loved it. I loved it. Let's see if they can keep it going because they are fucking horrendous. Take care, guys.